Okay, we're back. And, um, yeah. Um, I think. Um, okay, cool. Um, sorry about that. And, um, this is the International Ustream. And uh, we're going to go for a couple hours. And um, uh, we're going to have two contests. We're going to give away two shorts. And we're going to take all your questions. This is the last Ustream before the deadline on, on Saturday. I might jump on Ustream um, like the last hour just to kind of hang out. But um, maybe not. This is probably the last one, I imagine, because we don't want to like distract people on their last hour if they're still up. Um, and uh, so this is it. If you have any questions about Blue Cat or your submissions or anything, this is the time. We have two shorts to give away tonight, two short entries. And um, so the first one, the question is, why write... Why write a short instead of a feature? Why write a short instead of a feature? And put your answer, and I would just write in your answer, just write contest, so that we know that your comment is an answer to the contest. And Century will write them down, and we will, uh, we're gonna go with that for a little while. We're gonna go until about an hour in and we'll do the vote and then we'll take a short break we'll come back and we'll do a second contest too so we're going to give away two and hopefully people will uh jump on and and uh, i'm still not it's still not um my chat is working okay all right well i'm never gonna i'm not gonna see anything i guess which is sort of for us yours is not either mm -hmm. Okay, well, maybe it'll work. Yeah, just okay, so, um, well, very good. Um, I don't really know, can't see. So does anybody have any questions at all? Let me know if you've got any questions about um, Blue Cat or your submissions or anything. Um, so, uh, are they, 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 um, it's coming in now. We got a little. So it finally came in now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, very good. So we're really excited. Um, we uh, were talking about when uh, we just made a couple of very funny videos. I wish we could show them to you now. I wonder if we could play them, but it would probably wouldn't play very well on UStream. I don't think. Um, and uh, somebody just sent me a thank you card from the workshop. And uh, there's my thank you card from the workshop. It's very sweet. And um, that was on Saturday, the one in LA. So they wrote a nice little thank you card for the workshop. And um, it was very sweet. It was very unexpected, the, the, the thing. And then they also sent a comic book. Um, comic book. Um, Pep. Pep, it's got a nice, uh, nice cover. Dan DiCarlo uh, art on the cover. That's definitely him. And um, I really uh, not sure who signed them, but um, it's cool. It's like uh, got a little Betty and Veronica. They've been out shopping, as you can see. See, they're like out. They're out shopping. Um, and. Uh, yeah, we're talking about like making a short on for uh, Funny or Die, like a um, couple ideas that we had. We do, you know, we made a we made a movie last year called Halloween Judge that was made. We made it in about a week, and we put that up on Funny or Die. It was very funny. We liked it, um, but uh, Halloween Judge, and um, I said yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was awesome. So we're so uh, right after Blue Cat, things get a little not totally quiet, but they definitely settle down because we're not in the we're not having like hundreds of people send us stuff. Um, then we probably make something fun. Maybe we're, maybe we'll do something about Thanksgiving. Would you like to do that, yeah. Century? When you come back, well, you're coming back after Thanksgiving. Yeah, you're gonna be gone. Definitely. So maybe a Christmas funnier die. Yeah. 
Yeah, that'd be good. You 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 like to perform. Yeah, I do. But when you we do the videos, you're always sort of little hesitant, like you're not really into acting. I don't understand. I guess I just haven't done it for a while. I like preparation, so whenever I just have to jump into something, I'm like, ah, okay. But you were a theater major in school, mm -hmm. Chapman, not Chapman. No, UC Irvine. UC Irvine, yeah. And you're going, you're going to Northern California for, for the holiday. Right. Yeah. Right after Blue Cat. You're leaving on the deadline day. Yeah. You're leaving on Saturday, right in the middle of uh, flying up to SFO, aren't you? To Oakland, actually. Oh, you're going to Oakland. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, very good. Um, I'll be back. But you'll be back, and we'll, yeah. maybe we'll do the Christmas one. Yeah, yeah definitely. We're going to need some help. We need to come up with a Christmas idea for Funny or Die. Do you guys like making something. little sketches up? That's what... Uh, yeah. That's what... Any idea that could be one of the, the questions. Yeah, well, I was thinking, I thought of that we could discuss about that. We could, that we could, um, that we could discuss, oh, let's, let's have people pitch their ideas, and then I could comment on the ideas on the log lines, mm -hmm. or the ideas about, like, if, if you have an idea that you would like me to give my evaluation or my input on, for an idea and you don't you feel comfortable like you know sharing it with the people that are on here um, put idea and then put the little idea you could type out your idea and say do you think uh, I can write this or do you think this makes sense or I think this is a good idea I can even tell you some of my ideas and you guys can tell me if you think they're bad what do you th is that a bad idea I'm just interested to hear some of your ideas. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Why? I don't know. Just because it would be fun, right? Yeah, definitely. It's really compelling to, to get into the mind of the Gordo. Is of that course. what you're saying? Everybody's everybody's asking about Mike's head in the middle Mike's of the head. in the U stream. We're having like Mike's head in the middle, all right? He's just there he is. <laughs> it's so him, it's so a, it's awesome though. We like Mike. Everybody loves Mike, right? I wish my chat worked so I could see what people are saying. People. Oh. You know, like any kind of input, it's like I'm not getting any it's of really it. It's really strange. Yeah, it's really right. annoying. Mine's working, yeah. How many answers can you submit for the contest? Gordy? No, I, I, I can check my uh, email. I was just sort of... Um, how many? Uh, how much attention from producers do your finalists get? Well, our finalists, we send out. If you watch the uStream from earlier, you'll get a good sense of what happens. But we send out the log lines to everybody who. There's a. We have a pretty solid list of just the people that have done deals with the um, studios. So it's all producers and managers. And agents, pretty much agents and managers, and we. So I guess your your question, I we don't really we don't really have a comprehensive because we know that people want representation. They want to build a team, and that's really where we want to go to. Is we want to get people hooked up with somebody that's going to be on there. We don't really want to send people to producers if they don't have an agent or manager, and pretty much nobody does. Um, the finalists don't. So we send out the list to everybody in the industry, and um, and then they take meetings, and then they get signed and stuff. That's that's what we do. So we have a pretty we have a pretty good track record. Actually, we just learned earlier on the Ustream, and we're we're sending out a newsletter tomorrow, just announcing it again. Aaron Guzikowski is a Blue Cat alum who wrote Prisoners, and uh, he is being hired by Universal to write the Wolfman script. So that's another awesome thing for Aaron Guzikowski, and um, he's a great writer, and I'm sure he's going to do a great job. They really, he's, he's heading toward the A-list of uh, screenwriters, really, in, in town. He's getting some very nice jobs, I think. Um, I think probably a lot of people were up for that Wolfman job, and because uh, it's probably a nice, nice job. So, um, so that's cool. Um, how many how many answers can you submit? How many answers can you submit for the contest? Um, 
you can submit as many as you like. Let's just go crazy. Yeah. Let's just go crazy and just have as many. Because, I mean, they're not, it's not like you can come up with like seven ideas, seven reasons for this one. This is a little tougher. What would, what would be your answer? Why write a short instead of a feature? Um, well, I think uh, what John talked about earlier, actually, what I had never thought about that, how um, you can post it online and how, you know, if it's shorter, obviously, you know, but online isn't really good for maybe like a 15 minute short, but definitely if it's like a, you know, five, five minute short around there. Well, even a 15 minute short is better than an hour and a half feature. Right, and if right. somebody wants to just take a break and do a... Put a, upload a short so there's a there's a great uh, venue online now for content right. that is short content right so and it's, it's free distribution yeah so. yeah there's so many places where you right. can put it where people will get to see it mm -hmm. and um, yeah that was a great point that that was in our earlier um, her earlier thing Johnny just brought me some coffee some Starbucks Johnny. good job Johnny Johnny's been running around for us again, and uh, I can't see your chat, and it's really annoying. But basically, we'll ride it out, and then at the break, I'm going to reset this and figure out why it's... Maybe it's because I've got the Laurel and Hardy video on or something. I don't know, or something else. This is uh, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Maybe something will work there. Is symbolins, symbolism uh, is symbolistic? <laughs> is symbolism a hindrance in a short film? No, but if you're trying to over, like, if you're trying to deliver a message instead of tell a story, you know, there's an old saying that was attributed to, I think, Samuel Goldwyn. I don't know who said that. Who said that? Um, I'll find out right now, and then I'll... It's a very famous thing that a studio had um, said to a writer, Samuel Goldwyn. Samuel Goldwyn said, um, if, you, uh, if you want to send a message, call Western Union. The popular attribution to Goldwyn is false, according to his biographer. The earliest known print attribution is to Moss Hart in 1954, and also attributed to Humphrey Bogart and to Ernest Hemingway. So a number of people are supposedly have said it, but I guess Samuel Goldwyn supposedly didn't say it, but if you have a message, call Western Union. So it means you want to focus on story in a short. So symbolism, that might be a hindrance. Um, would you say uh, for a short film it is best to have the problem or issue of the story to be very apparent in the beginning so that the reader can focus on this character's development with these problems. Do you feel there shouldn't be a big mystery in a short? Well, it, it, you can have a big mystery, and the big mystery can go all the way to the end, and then you reveal the the uh, you reveal the uh, mystery, <laughs> and um, you reveal the solution or the answer or the you resolve the conflict. Um, so. I wouldn't get too, okay, I would just focus on what you can get done in the short and how compelling that idea is for, for the short. But you, you can set up something very quickly and then sustain it, um, or you can build slowly to a very sort of rising sense of, of mystery. I mean, there's, you can do a million things. There's no rules about this stuff, um, but something has to be compelling. It has to be highly watchable. And a short also wants to deliver an emotional response. You know, it's either like really funny or it's super scary or it's very touching. Uh, but a short has to operate the same way a feature does. It has to deliver an emotional response. Um, so uh, so it's fun. So we're, we're thinking about um, there's Johnny on the couch. You see Johnny over there. Wave, Johnny. Johnny. Yep, he's... Uh, Talking to people on Twitter, talking to people on Instagram. Someone said yeah. rings for Jenny. Yeah, we got a lot of uh, we've got a lot of um, feedback from people. We're gonna we're getting it's you know the last seventy two hours of Blue Cat is like a tsunami of of screenplay competition stuff, questions, 
questions, questions, people wanting to know everything, and it just gets really, 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 the clamor is loud. So right now that we get, we got a whole bunch of stuff and we're getting slammed with entries. We're getting a record number of entries once again to Blue Cat, and uh, which is really fun. And uh, we're, ex we're excited. We're excited because we, we want a big year. And we, you know, the more scripts we get, then we have a better, we have a, the scripts are stronger. We have more scripts to pick from. It's so awesome. So, um, Dumb and Dumber 2 opens up. I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm excited to, you know, really get back into my script. Um, I've got a script that I'm doing with Abigail Spencer. And, uh... And that's that's you know that's fun. Um, we've got a number of I, of answers to this. There are contest question, which if you don't know, it is contest question is why write a short instead of a feature. We read some of these to you. A short allows you to explore characters and situations that might not be able to carry a whole feature. That's true. I think most characters might be able to carry a whole feature, but definitely situations. There are some situations that are just built for a short, right? And that's that's what makes a pure short, is a short that you just can't see being a feature, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, I think that was what it was last year, is that the winner, and I said this before, the winner, the winning short was a pure short in that it really couldn't be made into a feature. I mean, I guess in some level it could have, but it really was this sort of just a just a portrait like a poem, and uh, that worked because there is a greater chance that you will compete complete it, and there, there's a better chance you could produce it yourself if you have to. That's a great answer. That's probably going to be one of the answers that we might pick. Um, you can complete a short. It's very affirming because you actually complete the short. You can actually learn how to rewrite. And, and be patient with your short. Um, that is just, you know, that's a huge thing. And it's harder to get that lesson and that affirmation with a feature because it takes longer for something to be completed or something to be a first draft rewritten or a rewrite. So that's a great answer. And then there is a better chance you could produce it if you have to. So, like, you know, we are probably going to do this Funny or Die Christmas, Christmas movie, special. Christmas yes. special. Blue Cat Christmas stuff. Yeah, the Blue Cat Christmas movie. Um, and we'll be able to make it, you know, with somebody's camera, with a GoPro or Mike's DSLR. Or, is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so uh, we've got a couple more questions here. Do the chances of being successful dwindle the later into a contest you submit, like reader fatigue, etc.? That's a great question. Because I think that, I think that it's it is natural that people get burnt out, and so we take a lot of steps to avoid that. We really, we try to give, we try to hire a lot of qualified readers. We don't want to, um, we want to because we want to be able to spread it out, you know, to spread out the scripts to people. You know, we don't want to have. Um, uh, you know, we don't want to have one or two people because they get, they, you know, like doing, because I, at the net, no matter how good they are, if people get sloppy, they're human and they're going to rush and they're just like, whatever. And it's going to, so we really try to spread it out and we never give out too many scripts to the one person. We don't, you know, I think in the past we would send out a nice batch to somebody and now we just really don't. We figure, look, look, read them and if you want some more ask us next week and we'll give you more but we we want to have we want to have everybody on a low diet we want people though we don't want our readers we want the readers to be busy i mean we don't want them to like be like why should i read for blue cat i'm only getting two scripts uh, a month or something you know so we definitely give them stuff but we, we we are so mindful of that we want everybody to be like hungry and wanting more, and wanting to do a good job, and fresh. So even at the end, when we have a bunch coming in, um, and we're going to have a bunch of scripts to read, you know, on next Monday and Tuesday, we're going to process all those entries, and we're going to have a big stack of scripts to read. But our readers have been, we've been very, very 
um, equitable with our readers, and it's you know it's I think it's I think we've I think we've made great strides from that, and I'm glad that you asked that because I can actually say that on UStream, and it will be on YouTube, and people will know that that's what we, that's our attitude and that's what we're trying to do and stuff instead of just this mystery. I mean that's why this these the UStream is so great because all this sort of the sort of dirty secrets or the sort of things that you're always like don't know about a contest we want to just talk about all that stuff we just want everybody to be like well blue cat the you know gordy at blue cat said that boom 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 and you know maybe you guys will be like well i don't agree with that rule or i wish they did this and stuff and you know and that's fine but at least you know like you hear from me and you know what we're doing um okay what's the best way to give yeah mike um, one quick thing someone tried to post a link to a cool short film that they found with john c Riley, but the link didn't show up so i was wondering if we could tell people that you can't it doesn't let you post links to things but if they want to say the name of that short oh go ahead um, so yeah so it, whoever posted the john c Riley short we can't post links into the into the chat but if you want to put the title of the short where people can find it just put that into the chat and someone else also asked if we could maybe recommend some good shorts to watch online. And I'm going to type in a thing for YouTube. I can't post the link, but I'll put like, I find like there's a little group of 2014 Sundance shorts on YouTube. So Oh, there, you, yeah. there we go. I mean, that's what's great about YouTube and Vimeo, but YouTube's great is you can like just Google Academy nominated shorts so that you can watch the, 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 the top, the, the shorts that have been nominated for Oscars. And you can watch them from this year and the year before and the year before and the year before, and they're all out there. Okay, you can always just Google, um, not search on YouTube for best short films or award-winning short films, and they'll just start popping up. And there's such a, you know, an inventory of the best ones. And you know, the thing is, is that you're not guaranteed. But those they will get you to watching some shorts and definitely the Academy nominated shorts, you know, hopefully they're pretty good, but you might re watch one of them and just be like, Are you, how did this happen? They're like, so that's why there's no definitive list. It's like, you might, you might find something that one, you know, Sundance or slam dance or South by Southwest or, you know, can or something like that from five years ago and you'll watch it and you'll be like, what? You'll just be shocked. So don't be surprised. That's why there's no definitive list. You just go ahead and just go ahead and um, watch away. You know, it's very, very easy. It's very clickable. There's short films on iTunes. Um, those are for sale. We have John Goldman's. Uh, you can download those. Those are like songs. You have to download those. So, I mean, I think the best way to sort of, if you just want to like stick your toe in the water and see what shorts, how shorts behave, you know, I would... Um, I would just go on YouTube or Vimeo and really just Google and Google will lead you Google will lead you to certain places one, one thing that's Google will also take you to places where somebody might have written a blog with like the top 10 and I or just top shorts we actually did a blog on and maybe Mike can post that in the chat um, we did a blog on Blue Cat for Shorts that were done by famous, um, famous, um, um, famous like like directors that are big now, and 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 so there's links to the different shorts that were made by. I think he might have links on there, but there's definitely a nice blog about that, and you can see those are very interesting because you get to see like that that the big guys were. Uh, big the big directors were doing stuff too at one point. Cool, um, yeah, I found it. Okay, so Mike's gonna post that on the chat. Can't post the link, but I'm gonna post it. He's gonna post uh, the link, uh, the uh, sort of a semi link or something, right? Yep. Description of how to find it. A description yeah. on how to find it. Okay. Um, an audience is attracted to a concept first, then character and story in equal measure. Symbolism is best left to the filmmaker, not the writer. That is not to say the writer cannot inject symbolism. So that's an answer to an earlier question. 
How do you further develop a character in a short film frame? If the response is the character is shallow, if the short is just a vignette of their life. Well, it's just about looking at the... If you're saying, okay, I don't have enough time, I've written six scenes, and they constitute the development of that character, well, then you need to go back into the six scenes or the six or seven beats that you've used that you say reveal character, and you need to, like, see what you're doing there and see if, like, maybe sometimes what happens is somebody will have um, uh, three of their scenes will basically be telling us the same thing about the character, like, three times. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, you haven't really given us a full fleshed out thing, even though you have three different scenes, but all they're showing is that they're desperate for for money or something like that, or that they're duplicitous, or that they're patronizing, or um, that they're grieving, or whatever. Um, and they're all sort of showing that. So then you're not using your uh, page space efficiently. You're not using the, 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 the canvas of the short efficiently. So you want to go in and say, okay, I want to show more. So maybe I can take the best scene that's showing that they are duplicitous or whatever, grieving, um, toxic, uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever you're trying to do. Um, and then go in a completely different direction and use the scene, the space for that one, but beat or moment and go ahead and um, create another, you know, uh, show something else about them, another side to them. So, um, yeah, these are great questions. So keep the questions coming in. Um, and we have some really nice answers that uh, Century is... Um, Johnny was uh, earlier was uh, coming up with new ideas for our videos. And he pitched, uh, he's been pitching ideas for our funny videos on on Instagram. I don't know if you guys like those, but we made sure one of the videos did not have the Wheaties box in, which I know you guys like. And we had a we had the we had the Wheaties box in. Um, we had the Wheaties box in one of them because we were we felt very sad because we know that people people like that, right? Yeah. The motif of the yeah. the Wheaties box. The, the visual motif? Yes. Decided the, that was. Yeah, the visual motif of the Instagram videos. Um, uh, some stories are only worthy of the short form. Makes no sense to stretch them out. Shorts can get a producer interested in your work and lead to writing assignments. That's a good one. I mean, shorts are a very good way, a good calling card. They are, like, uh, very helpful in, in introducing yourselves to people without having to make a whole feature. Um, and shorts have more avenues for distribution right now, just like, just like uh, Century mentioned, mm -hmm. that uh, there's more more places to go. Um, there are clearly competitions, but omnibus and anthology features comprised of shorts have made a big comeback in recent years. You know, give us some examples of that. I think there's I know the A to Z to horror horror is one that's awesome. Um, but I wonder, uh, other ones, other, like, I don't know. I mean, I know about the horror ones. Uh, shorts demand we focus on the heart of the story and express that in a compact for a great training for successful scenes in a feature. You're absolutely right. I mean, you know, making a short is very hard to make a, to make a, like, not like a, a sketch, you know, funny or die thing. Those are a little bit more, they're like, you know, they're sketches. But to make a real short, it's, uh, it's challenging. It's something in some, in many ways harder than a feature because you do have to have a beginning, middle, and end, and and listen an emotional response, and deliver exposition, and do it plausibly, and make it original, and do it in a short amount of time. <laughs> you know, all that stuff. It's a it's a tall order. You know. Um, if an emotionally satisfying beginning, middle, and end can be put down in thirty pages or less, maybe it doesn't need to go longer. Well, that's not true. Um, in some ways, what you're saying is true, but there's plenty of stuff that's that means any. I mean, there's so many. There's a lot of shorts that are four minutes long and that are emotionally satisfying, and they have a beginning, middle, and end, and they're like five pages long. Uh, it's more likely to get made. You have a, you'll have a reel. So a couple of these are duplicates. Um, we'll uh, we'll figure out how to go about that. Century's um, going to continue. 
So should I, so I can probably delete this one. I'm going to move this one yeah, over here. And then uh, this is the updated one. It's a great teacher for making features. If you have to, you have to tell a compelling story in a very short period of time, if you master that in a short, it can only help with your features. So some of these answers are duplicates. Not duplicate answers, but they're the same answer, right? Right. right. Yeah. So we'll, the first person who comes up with that answer, you know, maybe, right, yeah, because right. some of these are the same, same right. sense of them, and I think they're all great, but the person who wrote it down quickly, we're going to have to come up with our, uh, are you going to, you, you know, the, we're going to have one more contest in the second half of the hour, and I'm, maybe Johnny, Johnny, are you going to come up with a new next contest? I'll come up with it, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Okay. Johnny's going to do that. Johnny is going to, can an experimental short film win Blue Cat? Well, we had a feature win uh, that was pretty experimental. Not, it, it did have a beginning, middle, and end, but it wasn't experimental. But I would say it's the most experimental feature. I mean, it was pretty, it was pretty different. It was beautiful. I love that script. Very different script. And then the, the short film that won last year was, wasn't experimental. But it had fantastic elements to it, didn't it, Mike? Yes, definitely. I mean, magical realism or just sort of fantastic hallucinatory elements to it that were, it was definitely not uh, based in, completely in reality. So it, it definitely had a, a metaphoric quality to it visually that um, was um, hallucinatory and, and different. So The tone uh, was really great. I don't think it was an exper I don't think it would be called an experimental short though. Right. You know, I think it was I think it was a dramatic piece, but it sort of had it just was it was just a magical magical realism. This is not really working. Um, got a good uh, mise en scène going on though. Got us all fit in here. Yeah, yeah. Said, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got it going on, right? Um, Johnny's over there like trying to whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry, Sentry. How important is clarity in a short? If the short is great, but there's a lack of clarity at the end, would that knock you out? Well, I, I, don't, I, I mean, when something's mysterious or an ambiguous ending, that's fine. It's awesome. It can totally work. If something's not clear, there's a difference. If you're, if you're ambiguous because you made a choice to be ambiguous, that, that always reads differently than somebody who's simply not being clear. Clarity to me, um, to me, always means uh, how well is like the trend, the communication and expression of what the writer wants us to know, versus you know a, a mysterious ending or a um, uh, an ending that um, that leaves us hanging. Like what um, you know the end, like the end of Inception was. That wasn't a lack of clarity. That was just sort of an ambiguous ending, right? Right, right. Um, So here's some of the VHS, Chiller. Those are all horror, horror. I love you. Oh, yes, those things. Those things didn't do very well. I mean, I guess they did make one, and then they made another one. But I don't know. Are they still making those? I love you. Those were okay. Those were okay. I don't think they were great. Um, I wish they had, had younger people or... I don't know. Those are different. I did. I did see. I think I saw one, the New York one. I think I saw Paris too. Did you see those, Mike? I never saw those, but I heard they're good. I heard the Colin Brothers one, with Steve Buscemi, is really good. There's a in, in. I think. I think it's Paris. I love you. There's a Colin Brothers did a segment with Steve Buscemi. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Or it might be New York, but some. I think it was what. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it was. I think it was. Uh, I think it was New I think it might have been New York that they did the one for New York. That makes oh, okay. more sense. I don't know. I mean I don't know. But yeah, I heard those are really good. They did a Cleveland I love you recently. Really? Yeah. I love Cleveland? Yeah, like a Cleveland version. I mean I don't know if it's affiliated with it, but it had some like big people in it. It was No way. Yeah, totally. Like, no. Yeah, with um Post the link. Yeah. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Mike is from Cleveland, so you know everything always kind of goes back to like, hey, they shot that in Cleveland, and it's like they didn't shoot Citizen Kane in Cleveland. Like, 
You know, they, I, uh, I just, they shot it down the street in Paramount, but they they just didn't. <laughs> eh, it didn't. They, I don't think he shot in Ohio. Hey, uh, Christmas Story. Cleveland. Christmas Story was shot in Cleveland. There's a there's a bunch of great stuff in Cleveland. Cleveland is awesome. Ohio's great. Lake Erie is beautiful. I think Enemy is probably one of the best scripts I've ever written, but doubt it would get through a, a competition due to its complexity. What do you say to this? Enemy. What is? I'm not sure what Enemy is. What Enemy? What is Enemy, Mike? I'm not sure. I'm going to go here. Jake Gyllenhaal. I haven't seen it though. Oh, I think if they got, I think if the director of Prisoners did it. No, Jake, the Jake director Jake. of Prisoners. Javier yeah. Gullen. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I it look it it. it Maybe it wouldn't get through a competition, but who knows? I don't know. I don't know why you would say that. Maybe it would. Maybe it wouldn't. Um, oh, no. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't know until I read it. But, you know, it might, have, it might get through, it might not, you know. Um, I, remember, I remember a couple years ago there was a script that um, – there was a script that uh, that I read that was like a semi-finalist for us, maybe or quarter-finalist, and I read the first thirty pages of it, and I was just like, it got really, it just got really contrived, and I was like, I was like, no, I mean, I sort of wanted it to succeed because there was elements about it that, you know, I could tell were very, very attractive, but I was like, this is not, this is very, it just feels like not fresh. It's just like it, there was just things knocking me out. And then later on, it won. It won a fellowship with Nichols. That script won one of the one of the thirty five thousand dollar Nichols. That was like a, I don't know. It was a few years ago, but I distinctly remember that. Like going like, wow, that script won, and I read it, and I was like, I th I threw it out. Like it didn't it didn't make it. I don't think it made it. I, maybe it got to a semifinalist with Blue Cat. I don't know. It definitely advanced for a second, but then when I started to actually physically read it, it knocked itself out because I was like, "That's contrived. That's I've seen that before. You're, you know, this is this is not. You're pushing things together too quick. It was just things that sort of disqualified it from blue, from advancing in Blue Cat. And then that, then the guy, I was sort of like looked down at the list when Nichols announced it. And it's not to demean Nichols or say we're better or I don't know what that means, but it's just because he could have rewritten it. I mean, who knows? But it's just what it says is that one competition, the winner is another competition, you know, 100th place, you know, and that basically there's probably thing, there's things that we've gotten excited about and the Nichols readers have, have chucked out, you know, and... Um, you know, but that's what makes it cool is that, you know, everything, everybody's human and everybody's, uh, you know, it's all, it is all subjective. It literally is all subjective to our own personal histories, our personal experiences, what we care about, how we felt, what we ate in the last week, if we exercised in the last week. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, I know that sounds like what, but are you kidding me? What do you think? Um, that's why Clint Eastwood has been drinking, you know, wheatgrass since the 50s to keep clear his head and to and be of sound mind and body. So he's had this long ass career because he was a health food nut in the 50s. And he's always been like that. And I have, that's why he's like 84 and going to be nominated again for another. <laughs> he's got so much energy, right? He's 84. He did Jersey Boys was released this year. American Sniper is coming out. They, they're raving about that. That world pr that premiered at the AFI last night up on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, and... Uh, and he's 84, but he does. He, I want to be like that when I'm that old. Right, he's just like, well, you can look. You look at all the Sergio Leone movies, and he's so thin, and he just takes care of himself. You know, he looked, he always was very handsome, very handsome guy, but he's continued to be like, you know, there's a reason why he still has the energy, he's still rolling and stuff, and I and I think he was. He was, he was 
I think his co-stars talked about how they, he was trying to get them to, you know, get you know drink some drink some carrot juice when in 1958 or something like that. He definitely was never a smoker, and he was never a partier, at all. You know, um, and uh, which is man, now we're really we're really uh, we're really grateful because he's made some nice films. You know, recently and. Uh, films that people like and I think this American Sniper everybody's like freaking out about it I thought that it would be good um, because because it's it's it feels like that's where all the experience from the Sergio Leone movies that he was doing um, that that would be that that would really that would be something so um, so any more questions we got some more questions here I think I'm looking uh, let me know if you guys have any more questions. I can't even read your chat, so I'm just doing this all. Just I don't even know what what we're um, after. You've watched Enemy read my blog. I like that. Okay, <laughs> well, you know, send us uh, if you have a blog post and you want to, we can we can we can put it on our uh, our own blog and we'll sort of link people through. We can tease it, put a picture. And we'll direct, I mean, we'll put it on our Twitter feed and people will sort of find it or something like that. We'll definitely help you. Uh, um, That's the best one. Is there a type of script that you have just no interest in writing? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So let's go through the genres and I'll tell, I'll tell you if I'm like, what do we do? Or maybe we'll go to um, a better cue. I like that, better cue. You know what a better queue is? A better queue is they um, it's a great place for Netflix online viewing. So you go to Better Q and they have everything. It's basically like the best way to find stuff on um, on uh, Netflix without trying to you know how Netflix sucks. This is actually where you actually find movies you're like, oh that movie's on there? And you're like, why didn't I ever find that before? You know, and it's like it's so awesome. There's a couple of good ones, Instant Watcher, but a better Q is the best one. We should, maybe, you know, maybe type that in a better Q so that they know what I'm talking about. Um, so okay, action adventure, definitely. I, I, I mean, I have, I have a number of great action ideas that I would love to do. Action and adventure, Animal Tales. I have a great I just made it a sort of an animal tale called Dog Bowl, and and I have other. I have a really great idea uh, involving a a dog that sniffs out drugs. Um, I'm not going to tell you what the idea is because it's so good. Somebody will totally. It's like this. It's so awesome. So anime, anime is not animation. But it is. It's an anim 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 animation on there. But anime, um, animation, yes. I definitely thought that some of my some of my ideas might be translatable into that. I don't really think in terms of animation, but I don't think I would never be like uh, children's movies. Well, I just wrote one of those. I write comedies, uh, dramas, faith and spirituality. I'd love to write like a God movie, or you know, why not? A foreign movies, uh, yes. I want to write a. Swedish movie. Um, you guys are really tired because that was sort of funny. You didn't get that one, Mike? Wait, what'd you say? I'm sorry. I said, I, I said we're going through the genres on a better queue, and I just said, I got to foreign movies, and I said I wanted to write a Swedish movie. <laughs> you know that? Okay. My, my computer died, oh. so I was trying to figure that out. Oh, that's funny. Someone yeah. said thanks so much for a better queue. Yeah, that's... And it's, it is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Funny. No, a better cue is it, guys. I, I don't know if there's a better one, so let me know. But a better cue is the one that it's like it's so it's so rad. You just click with the, you just can click and move the little meter thing, and it's like you just find stuff. And it's there's always stuff you're like that was on there. It's just they all are like that. But in, an instant watcher, it's too busy. This is just like for some reason it's just sort of like bam. Um, Gay and lesbian movie, I definitely have some ideas for uh, gay, lesbian protagonists. Horror movie, I've already I wrote a horror short. So basically, I'm just going through this and boring everybody with this stuff. But um, 
Yes, I would definitely. I, I'm, I'm finding that I'm. I, Westerns, thrillers. What about musical? I want to totally do a musical. Yes. I, I have a treatment already for a musical, and I would love to write the lyrics to all the songs. What about Bollywood? I don't know if I would do that. But I don't know if that's really... I mean, I could. I guess it is a genre, and it's something that people outside of India do, and, and it's definitely a genre. So I don't know. Maybe. I just, you know... See, I don't know if you'd be able to get on there, because I'm telling you... You wouldn't be able to sign on because Sarah Lynn will block. Um, okay. Um, is this a keep trying no matter what mo motivational thing? What does that what do you, what does that mean? Is this a keep trying no matter what motivational thing? Just answer, ask the question again because I think you probably have a good question. Just ask ask it again so that we can um, we can. Uh, look that over okay we're going to end the uh, contest in about four minutes and then we're going to give you a few answers to vote on and then we're going to vote and that'll take us up to the hour mark and we'll announce the winner so um, let me ask this one more question um, while you get your last answers on and uh, can you actually get back onto the mail and stuff on this or you had your whole uh, little stash, but you have sent me. You have, you did send me I sent you basically were, everything. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what I can do is I can send Mike. Can I send it? Can I send the three top three back to you? Yeah, top, uh, top three uh, on the um, things. And then I can type them into the thing. Okay. Well, we'll wait and see if we have a couple more. Could you quickly explain some main tips to write low budget because action is generally expensive to film, is it? Well, generally, I think that you're going to have a little bit more difficulty. Um, there's a great, there was a great article written a long time ago by the Canadian, like a Canadian film, like low budget. Here, let me see if I can find it. It's really old. Uh, um, tips, Canadian Film Center, and it was like everything that you needed. It was really old. Um, I wish I, I wish I had it. It's like a great. Oh, this is what it is. This is it. Here it is. Um, I want to. Okay. It's if you if you Google low budget tips Canadian Film Center and center spelled C N T R E like the Canadian, Canadian uh, Film Center. Yeah, low budget tips. And it's the, I had this printed out literally in my house, like a hard copy of this, like 20 years ago. The elements to watch out for are too many, too many speaking parts, too many locations, special effects and firearms. Okay, I'm going to go through all the things that I violated with Dog Bowl, okay? Um, you know what? We're going to run out of time. We'll go back to this one. This is a great thing. I want to, I want to talk about this because I want to sort of inspire you guys to go and because then you can write to budget. You can, if you want to make a movie, you can actually write to write to budget. Okay, so I'm going to give Mike my top three um, uh, and Century is done with um, with our nominations and um, Okay, guys, thanks for your patience. I'm just d determining the top three, and Mike will, uh, I'm sending them over to Mike, and once he gets them posted, uh, Sentry will tell me when they're posted, and then we'll go, we'll go two minutes, we'll go a minute, and everybody will just quickly vote. We'll give you two minutes to vote. Um, Johnny has come up with about seven awesome ideas for the final contest of the year uh, final contest of 2014 we'll have another contest maybe before the end of the year year but in terms of this competition the 2014 competition 
it's over. This is the last free entry contest. Other than, I mean, Heather might, I don't know. I don't know why she would give out free entries now, though. It's so late in the game. Yeah, I don't think she would. How would you give out a free entry now, Mike? Well, they're, they're, they're up. I didn't. Okay, Mike, just put them up, and I'm going to give you two minutes to um, go. So just give us your answer. Cut and paste the answer in there, and uh, Century will... Tally up the votes? Yes, yeah, she'll tally up the votes. Okay, now, um, Mike, do yes. you... Uh, God, I wish we could get everybody to look at this, but... Um, yeah, I had a bonus I didn't... But I can, I can, I, what I can do is I can, um, wh when we come back, maybe I'll just, like, one at a time, like, put this into the chat, yeah. and then I get it reset, and I can sort of talk about, a little bit about this low-budget thing. I put in for them to Google low-budget film, or low-budget tips Canadian Film Center. So yeah, so if you guys want to find that, it's um, online-communicator.com, script tip, and we can look at it, but I'll also, I'll also... Put them in the chat. I'm going to reset the, um, I'm going to sign out and everything and probably, I don't know, shouldn't I? Because I'm going to get the chat going. It's just not working over here. Anyways, we'll figure it out on the break, everybody. Um, this is a good one. I'm glad we're here tonight and, uh, you know, and I think we're having some good conversations. Um, Oh, that's a good. That's a pretty good one. Okay, so these these are good. These are fun ones. These are fun questions for our next um, contest. We've got a. We got a. Uh, we should. I wish should. I wish we could do a poll and uh, pick the but. I guess we'll all decide which one, uh, which one to use. So, um, all right. Well, we're running out of time. I hope everybody's voted. And uh, do we have a tally? Yeah. Okay. The winner is for the sh free short entry that you have to use this year. It's the. Okay. I let me let me look. I I, I think I can figure it out. Um, <laughs> it's the first one. Uh, because there is a greater chance you will complete it and there is a better chance you could produce it yourself if you have to. That's the answer that is why write a short instead of a feature. So whoever wrote because there is a greater chance that you will complete it and there is a better chance you could produce it yourself if you have to, you just won a free short entry. That's $50 right now, I think. Right? It's 60. 60. It's $60 to enter a short and so you just got that hooked up. So like, yeah. uh, so let's yeah, let's bang it out. You got about what seventy-two hours, right? You can totally do that. Easy yeah. peasy. Seventy-two hours. Well, seventy-one and a half. So seventy-one and a half hours. All right, folks, we're gonna come right back in about ten minutes, and we're gonna do another contest. We're gonna wrap it up with Johnny. We're gonna talk about um, how to write a low-budget feature. And a lot of those things will apply to writing a low-budget short, so you can look out for things that are, that can avoid you. And I'll talk to how that will impact your creative process too. So I'll be right back. Um, we'll see you soon.